Good morning, Winfrey. Happy Monday. Um, so listen, I am filming this to you on Sunday evening. I had planned on doing it sooner, but with impact starting this afternoon and setting up for that and tearing down and all that kind of stuff, it just uh, didn't happen. There's about 70 people here at Winfrey right now, and we will be here all week. It's a little bit of free time. Um, I can actually hear some people like running around outside my office. So I uh, just want to give you a little heads up on that. So today I talked about the story of Rahab and I could only go so far with it because um, I only had so much time. So I wanted to go a little bit deeper into that. And so if you get a chance, please read all of Joshua 2. It's 22 verses, but it's really a cool story. And there's some symbolism in there. And so I wanted to kind of talk about that for just a minute. But before I do that, it wasn't just that Rahab saved the two spies' life and lied, and she could have been killed for it. If you haven't had a chance to um, watch the message yet, I encourage you to do that as well. Um, and so um, she also like coached them on what to do and how to do it. She said, go out into the field and wait three days. By those three days, the other, the people that were searching for them um, would, um, it, from Jericho would leave and come back because they hadn't found them yet. And so they waited literally in a field for three days and then came and then was able to go back. Um, so I want to share a little bit about that sort of thing with you. So in return for their safety, the spies vowed to protect Rahab when the Israelite assault began, provided she abided by two conditions. One, she and all her family must stay inside her house during the attack. They can't promise anything beyond that. If they go outside, they're kind of fair game. And two, she must tie a piece of red cord to her window to identify the location to attacking troops. Remember, she's on this outer wall and they're going to get hit when the Israelites invade Jericho. And so where the scarlet cord came from isn't really revealed. It may have been in Rahab's house or with the flax bundles where the spies were hiding. Or maybe the spies had it on them to either tie their clothes, backpacks, or sleeping gear. So she lowers them down from her window on the wall after they first establish that in order to be protected, she must tie the scarlet cord in her window. This, is, this way her house will be identified to an Israelite search party, and that's from verses 18 and 19. So the two spies, no doubt, excitedly explained all of these events to Joshua, who's the leader now after Moses, who in response accepted the vow to protect Rahab and her family. As the Israelites approached Jericho, God explained he would collapse the walls. And this happens in Joshua 6. Joshua must have wondered how the vow would be honored when the walls fell. Did it mean all the walls? or just enough of the wall structure to enable troops to rush in and take the city, it really does imply all the walls. Think about that. It must have been astonishing when the dust settled to see the section of the wall where the red cord was tied to a window still stood upright. What an amazing deliverance. What a lesson of trust and faith not just for Rahab and her family, but also for Joshua and the Israelites. See, Joshua immediately told the spies to take Rahab and her family outside the Israelite camp. Remember, they were Gentiles. They were a different nation. Then they burned the city. The biblical directive means that it must have also included the standing wall of Rahab's house. Now, let's consider for just a minute why Christians are impressed with the scarlet cord in the window. And here's some symbolism. It forces upon us in the light of scriptural teaching about the blood of Christ. See, red blood from slain lambs that was splashed over the doorposts of Israelite homes in Egypt protected them from the slayer of the firstborn. 
And that's that was the final straw for Pharaoh to finally let them go after he lost his firstborn. That's from Exodus 12, 13. The scarlet cord seems to symbolize in type Rahab's acceptance of the lamb's blood in her life. She was the first ever Gentile convert. That's pretty special. See, what the blood on the doorposts on the first Passover night in Egypt was to the house of Israel, the scarlet cord in the window was to the house of Rahab. See, it became Rahab's identification as one to be saved in a day of calamity. It was the acting out of her faith, her sinful years overlooked, and that can be found in Acts 17, 30 through 31. She became the ancestress, as did Ruth, of David and Jesus Christ, our Savior. How cool is that, y'all? So I hope this gives you a little bit more insight into some symbolism that was going on there during that story and a little bit more about who Rahab was and what an amazing woman she really was. So um, please keep the 70 of us that are here doing five different service projects in the community this week. It's going to be a hot one and we are just excited, excited to see what God has in store. So let me close this in prayer real quick. Heavenly Father, I thank you for uh, the story of Rahab and being able to dive a little bit deeper into that. I thank you for the cool symbolism that you show throughout the Bible and how we can look at the Israelites leaving Egypt and how Rahab had that same type of thing happen to leave Jericho and to become the first ever Gentile convert into following you and knowing that you are the one true God. Help us to look for opportunities to share your love this week. We pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. All right, y'all have a great rest of the week. Again, keep us in your prayer. We're going to need it. Take care.